Glory to God. Good morning, everybody. Um, doing well. This morning, I just, we're going to pray in the spirit for a bit, but why do we pray? Why do we pray? Number one, we pray because um, we have a God that answers prayers. Number two, we pray because prayer is an invitation to fellowship with God. Number three, we pray because God is faithful and is a means of communication with God. Number four, we pray because we pray to seek the will of God and pray to align ourselves to the will of God. We pray because it takes humility to pray, to recognize that you are not the God of your life and you need God. Mm. Um, we pray also because um, that's where we are, our hope and trust is in God. We pray also to celebrate God, to celebrate his kindness, celebrate his goodness. We pray to energize ourselves because nobody can do the things that, um, well, nobody can do the things that he has, we can with, without the empowerment of God. There's one thing to say, oh, people are making it, they're making money and all. For us, our success is not just physical. It's also uh, spiritual and body. How connected are we to God? The peace that passes all understanding, the strength. That and more is the reason why we pray. So this morning, we're going to spend time to build up our most holy faith. You see, one of the things I've realized is if you are not trained to connect with God, beyond gatherings and if we're not trained to connect with God through prayer all through the day the Bible says pray without season you know and it's quite interesting to think about ah pray without season how will that happen you know but that's one of the blessings of God that God is calling us into fellowship as you go through your day you become prayer I love the way TPT says is it become prayer I've been always been intrigued to know, it's intriguing to know that no matter how much people are there for you, there was only one person that is truly there with you all through the moment, and that's the Holy Spirit. So if you're not trained to learn the power you carry to fellowship with him, how do you navigate moments? How do people manage your thoughts when you're having thoughts come to your mind? When you're having ideas come into your mind when you're having um you know lies you know when things are happening to, you know how do you navigate those processes if you don't know that you can talk to god on your own i think the greatest things that happen is the fact that you can talk to people now you feel okay huh. and then you are back alone with your thoughts you are back alone God help you. Maybe regardless of whether you stay alone, you're married or whatever, you, you you are alone. You will always be at that point where it's just you at that point. And that is why we need to equip ourselves to know that we have the power. You'll be in situations where before you call people, you can even call somebody. You need to make decisions. Um, you need to rest. I'm just having a sense in which. God is calling us to begin to empower ourselves as individuals, as well as we empower ourselves collectively. Let this, let this, let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Let this strength that you're not alone, God has got you. Let it, let it be an anchor for your soul. The revelation that God will lead you, the, the ability to process with God, the ability to counter every thought as things are coming into your spirit. You can pull down. You can say, okay, yes, Lord. You can say, uh -uh, no, 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 this is not God. That ability to quickly refocus any thoughts, any mindsets is a necessity. And one of the ways you do that is through prayer. 
Let's open the book of Jude. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hold on. Before we go there, Hebrews 10, 23 says, let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm. For God can be trusted to keep his promise. Hmm. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to act of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the days of his returning is drawing near. But by focus is 23. Let us hold tightly. Hmm. We know that we can trust God to do the things he has promised. So we must continue to expect those things. We must tell other people that we can trust God. We should not stop doing that. I don't know who is that person that you, you, these things are great, but. Uh, so now wrap your heart tightly around the hope that lives within us, knowing that God always keeps his promise. Let us keep a firm grip on the promise that keeps us going. He always keeps his word. Let us seize and hold fast and retain without wavering the hope we cherish and confess that our acknowledgement of it or evil promise is reliable and faithful to his word. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering or evil has promised is faithful. So we're going to use the scripture to pray as well as Judah separating the the most holy faith. This morning, we want to pray. We're going to pray in the spirit. We're going to pray in understanding as many that can. And we're, op- we're trusting God that this scripture will be an anchor for our soul. We're hoping that this scripture will be a strong anchor for our soul. I want to look for a message. There was a message Pastor Edward preached. Um, it's called The Dark Night of the Soul. During she is so I will, I'll post the link afterwards, but we're going to pray. What are we praying for? Lord, this scripture, I want it imprinted. Lord, us all tightly without waving the open firm. For God can be trusted to keep his promise. We know that we can trust God to, to do the things he has promised. So we must continue to expect those things. Some of us are no longer expecting. So we're going to pray in the Holy Ghost. Some of us have trusted, believed God. Can I say this? Sometimes I've said it over and over, after every great encounter, get ready for the enemy to lock around to either um, Hebrews 10 verse 23. For somebody, listen, after every great encounter, every great revelation in the middle of great things, middle of the new, just know that the devil will try all he can to discredit what God is doing in your life, to try all you can to tell you that maybe you did not hear God, try what you can to make you feel that what you experienced, you did not experience. So that is one of the reasons why you have to stubbornly refuse. You know, <clears throat> stubbornly refuse, stubbornly refuse to let the enemy lie to you or steal from you. Whatever it takes, and sometimes it's praying the Holy Ghost, sometimes open your mouth to speak. I must tell you the power of opening your mouth to talk and not, and not just, I'm thinking it's in my mind. Open your mouth to talk and, say, and declare those things that God has said. Open your mouth to declare what God has said to you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we're going to open our mouth this morning. And we're going to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. You pray, putting the scripture in your heart. That's what we're praying. But we're praying the spirit. The Lord help me to hold fast the words you've spoken. Help me to believe that you are faithful. Help me, God, to believe that you can be trusted. That's what we want. Then there's a way you can pray. We're praying the spirit, but we're praying this with an understanding. Hello, by the time we're done, even if we have 20 minutes to do this, I would leave with a note of victory that you can be trusted. And concerning my life, you are at work full time. God is not doing a part-time job when it comes to your life. He's, in, he's involved full time. God is not cheating on you. He's involved full time. He's present full time. His mind is stayed on you full time. In the name of Jesus. Come on, let's open our mouths and let's begin to pray. Where you are is not nice, you can unmute your mic. 
Makasukada bakashataba. Makaya da baka supre de rebeke sekete. Madada da baka shatabayadaba. Mendekele boko shekete yada. Zekete le kadaba shatabayadaba. The Lord God and imputing in my spirit. Thank you. We trust in Maka Satabayadaba. Medekele boko shatabayada. Ledekele de boko shatabayadaba. Ledekele de boko sokoto. Madada baka shatabayada baka sakata. Medekele de boko shatabayadaba. Oh, Chef, where you are, don't lose your own views and join us. Make a little bit of soap, like a little bit of soap, make 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 a little bit of Mother, Mother, 
Oh, <laughs> Mada <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
I don't know about you, but I was praying. The Lord started um, putting certain scripture in my uh, heart. The first one was someone, but there's one we're going to pray together. But let me read this first one. Psalms 18. Psalms 18. It says, mm, God's way is perfect. Verse 30. All the Lord's promises prove true. Is a shield for all those who look for protection. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Verse thirty-two. God arms me with God. God arms me with strength, and He makes my way perfect. He makes me as sure-footed as there, enabling me to stand on mountain heights. I don't know who you are, but the you that needs to stand, or it makes you as a sure-footed. It makes you. I show for as a day. I've taught on this script on this platform. That scripture. I've shown you what a day. When they say it makes you footed, it might not. It it, it 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 looks like the walls are about to come crashing on you. But the Lord begins to. There's a modification that is happening to you that will make you not just um live through seasons or you know it's going to make you thrive. You know, and it says that it trains. This is where I'm going. It trains my hand for battle. It strengthens my arms to draw a bronze bow. Psalms 18, verse 34. You have given me your shield of victory. Your right hand supports me. Your help has made me great. This is the season of help and support from God. In the name of Jesus. But this way, he says, he trains my hand for battle. He strengthens my arm to, 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 he says, you have trained me with weapons of warfare worship. And one of the things I heard as a season of praise and worship, like never before, deliberately praise God. Now I will descend into the battle with power to chase and conquer my conquer my foes. But you see, it's it trained my, me with weapons of warfare worship. You see, you train my hand with war. You see, by my God, you know, that's when you say, by my God, you will leap through a you, you run through a troop. By your God, you will leap over war, walls. And I pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord God has given us what it takes in the name of Jesus. And all of a sudden, the Lord started speaking. Um, this scripture, and that's what I want us to pray. You anoint my head with oil, my cup run it over. You anoint my head with all my cup run it over. Surely, of a certainty, goodness, mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will do in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. This goodness will not take me out of God's presence. And I want to just, we, we quote that scripture a lot that we don't understand. You anoint my head with oil, your cup run it over. So wherever you have a cup, what in your industry, your family, your cup run it over. Why? The anointing is coming from the Lord. He anoints my every oil, my cup. Surely, wherever you are, I want us to pray that scripture by declaring it over your life over and over again. If what your eyes don't know, you can unmute your mic and begin to pray. Father, in the name of your according to your word in Psalm 23, you anoint my head with oil. You anoint my head with oil. My cup run it over. You anoint my head with oil. And I am ready for a fresh motion, a fresh anointing. You anoint my head with oil. My Surely your goodness and your message follows me 
In Jesus name. I need, I think a lot of times we have prayed this scripture as closing remarks in church. That's it's something we say so casually that we lose sight of. Mm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Before I read this, Father, we declare for divine health for everyone on this call. We pray for divine health for Nigerians. We pray for healing. That, Lord, no more will people pass in this country because of negligence. In the name of Jesus, we pray for divine healing. We pray for divine strength for everyone. We pray for wisdom for the hospitals. We pray for compassion in the name of... Nobody will go to an hospital that does not have what they need. And in fact, Lord, we pray for divine help for health for, for, for us in the name of Jesus. Amen. I just saw a picture. All right. Let's look at the scripture again. Psalms 23 from verse 5. I'm using the message translation now. You serve me a six-course dinner right in front of my enemy. You revive my drooping head. My cup brings with blessing. Your beauty, your beauty and love chases after me every day of my life. I'm back home in the house of God for the rest of my days. Hallelujah. I pray for you um, that your parents, it is well with them. In the name of Jesus, we come against every part of the enemy over their lives. In the name of Jesus, it is well with them. They are healed in Jesus' name, Mary. Um, TBT says that you've become my delicious feast even when my enemy dares to fight. You anoint me with fragrance of your Holy Spirit. You give me all I can drink of you until my heart overflows. So why should I fear the future? For your goodness and love pursue me all the days of my life. Then afterwards, when my life is through, I'll return to your glorious presence to be with you forevermore. Amen, 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 amen. You prepare a banquet for me where all my enemies can see me. You welcome me as an honored guest and fill my cup to brim. I know that your goodness and love will be with me all my life. And my house, your, and your house will be my home as long as I live. 
Hallelujah. It says, Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou hast anointed my head with oil and my cup running over. Surely goodness and loving kindness shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the presence of the Lord. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemy. You have anointed and refreshed my head with oil, my cup running over. Surely goodness and mercy and unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell forever throughout my days in the house of the Lord. Amen. You prepare a big meal for me while my enemies watch. You put olive oil on my head. You bless me so much that my cup is completely full. Is anybody's cup completely full here? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Is anybody's cup completely full here? He says that, Lord, you, you prepare a table before me. My cup is completely full. You bless me so much that my cup is completely full. I don't know about you, but this is a scripture. The Lord for the now. You bless me so much that my cup is completely full. I am sure that you will always be good to me. I am sure that you will always, the easy translation. I am sure that you will always be good to me. You will love me all the days of my life. That will never change. I will live in the Lord's house for as long as I live. And I pray for us in this call, on this call this morning, that this will be our reality in the name of Jesus. This will be a, a reality. So it says that the Lord takes care of me like a shepherd with a sheep. I have everything that I need. The Lord takes care of me. I have everything that I need in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we thank you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor in the name of Jesus. We go in this might that we are anointed for overflow. We are anointed for abundance. We are anointed, oh God, and your goodness and your mercy follow us all the days of our lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you all. You can use this link to join all the other prayer watches by nine. I received this for myself, but the Lord is saying, is about to teach us how to sleep. I don't know what this is for, but the Lord is about to help you sleep very well. How to sleep. You know, Psalms 127 says, he gives his beloved sleep. I receive it for myself. Like you will sleep, you know, all the sleep that like we are sleeping, that we wake up and you are not yet sure, you are not refreshed, you are not, your mind is not renewed, no more overthinking even in your sleep, no more, anybody that is dealing with insomnia, we come against it on the score right now. Like you said, it's, it's going to unravel to us a new dimension of sleep. You know, the kind of sleep that God was able to create from Adam and he was asleep. Adam did not miss, jump up out of his sleep while they are opening it up. You are now, you know, your mind will be at peace. Your mind will be at rest in the name of Jesus. You're going to sleep. I receive it. I'm going to sleep. I, 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 I'm declaring it. I enter into a realm of sleep like never before in the name of Jesus. It's going to sleep that refreshes the soul. Sleep that you wake up and your whole body is energized. Somebody, even figuratively, God says, I'm putting you to sleep so that I can do the work I want to do. I'm putting you to sleep so that I can bring out of you what I need to bring out of you. I'm putting you to sleep so I can do the surgical work in you. I'm putting you to sleep so that I can replace whatever organ needs to be replaced. I'm bringing you to sleep. I'm bringing you to sleep in the name of Jesus so that you can hear clearly and download clearly. No more interference in our sleep. No more demonic interference. No more demonic dreams. Only the pathways of heaven in our sleep. Who is taking this this morning? I am going to sleep like a baby. I I enter into the realm. When God, the intent of God, when he created sleep, the intent of God, now Jesus showed us how to sleep. I have Jesus showed us how to sleep in the boat, in the storm, that kind of sleep that you will be rested into your core in the name of Jesus, that in the midst of storm, in the midst of chaos, in the midst of many decisions to be made, in the midst of so many things that you are doing, you will be able, when it's time to sleep, 
as your head eats that pillow, wherever it is, it's not about a function of bed. That bed becomes a cradle for you to sleep. That home becomes that environment. That room becomes a place where you put your head and you sleep. I sleep like a baby. From today, I enter into dimensions of sleep that was on the mind of God when he created sleep. In the name of Jesus, I will not need any, I, I don't need anything else but the spirit of God to help me enter this. In Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know who you are. I receive it for myself. I receive it for my husband. You sleep beautifully well. Anything that interrupts your sleep, is it your breathing? Is it your body? Is it your whatever? Is it your mind? For some of us, your mind does not know. Wait, it's time to sleep. It's still working. It's time to sleep, mind. It's, you are only as allowed to download. No mysteries that you, you, are, you are only allowed to store up encounters, mysteries. And that does not have to affect my sleep. Except God wants to wake you up to have conversation. But the kind of sleep, I keep hearing like Adam, the kind of sleep that Adam slept, that he will wake up and something has been created from him. No more interruptions. No more demonic dreams. No more demonic afflictions, all this sex in the dream, beating in the dream, demonic manipulations in the dream, people infiltrating your dream, no more in the name of Jesus. Father, we receive it in Jesus. And there is a special Thanksgiving happening 12 p.m. on Friday, special worship. We're going to have different people on. Um, I'll be there. We're going to have a series. We're going to have Reverend DG. Reverend DG is one, the pastor that's of the church we use at One Friends Pray. We're going to have Tama. We're going to have myself. We're going to have, you know, TI, Minister Titi. It's going to be a powerful time of worship, of praise, and atmosphere. The same link, 12 p.m. on Friday. Wherever you are, you can join in. And the Lord will strengthen us all in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.